Hi, welcome to the virtual orientation for the 34 RSBS J Flight by Jayco. We're going to start the orientation on the outside of the RV and we're going to begin at the front. First thing we're going to make note of is your front storage compartment, your uh, door side access. It has the older style clasp. And you will see inside this front compartment, you will find your manual crank for your electric tongue jack and your manual crank for your stabilization jacks. Now, there are four of these stabilization jacks. They are located at the four corners of the trailer. They are never to be used to level the trailer. However, once you have the trailer fully level, you would snug these up to the ground for full stabilization. Now, depending on the uh, surface that you're leveling it on, you may need to have some additional blocking for these to be snugged up to the ground. So we continue along the front. We'll make note of your battery storage area. And just in front of the battery storage area, we'll make note of your propane bottle storage. This has double a 30 pound bottle system complete with a crossover regulator. And what this crossover regulator means, that you'll see that the black handle is pointing to this 30 pound bottle. So in this 30 pound bottle, the pressure in this bottle drops below a predetermined pressure. It is determined by the regulator and uh, not adjustable. Once the regulator senses that this tank drops below that predetermined amount of pressure, it automatically crosses over and will draw from the second tank. What that means is, on those cold nights, if you've got the furnace on, you don't have to sneak outside in the middle of the night to manually switch the bottles over. Now just in front of the propane storage, we have your electric tongue jack. We can see we have switching to move it up and down. We also have a light that's handy for loading at night or hitching up at night. And we also have this rubber stopper. If you remove this rubber port, that will give you access to a nut that you can then use the manual crank that I showed you earlier to move the jack up and down. Continue our way along the outside of the RV, just making note of another loading light on the front. We have our off-door access to the front pass-through compartment. And as we come around this side, I would like to make note of the, just underneath this front slide, the valve handles for your gray water. And as we make our way further along, we have this storage compartment here in which You'll see we have your barbecue or RVQ all set up and ready to go. This can be utilized on the back bumper of the RV. There are posts on the apparatus on the back bumper that I will show you. Those posts slide into here on one on either side. And then you simply connect the quick connect hose to here. And then the other end on the RV side that I'll show you in, in a little bit. Uh, and then you light it the same as you would any uh, barbecue with the barbecue lighter once this is in the uh, light position. So as we continue to make our way around the outside, we'd like to just squat down here and finish showing you the rest of the black and gray water. We have the valve handle for your black water here. The second gray water valve handle is here. And we have the output for the black and gray water uh, tanks themselves right here. So we stand up, we will see that we have these three attachment points for a garden hose, for lack of a better way to say it. The very bottom one is your city water connection. This is the connection point that you use uh, when you're wanting to hook up to the garden hose from either your house or the campground and you would use it to uh, pressurize your water system, much like the uh, water system of your house. Directly above that, we have your potable water or fresh water tank fill. This is, you attach the garden hose to this area here uh, to fill your fresh water tank. 
You would use this if you're going camping in a spot that doesn't have a water connection or if the water connection isn't potable. This would give you the ability to add some potable water to your system that you could then use with your freshwater tank. And then the third one is your black tank flush. It's important to make sure that you're connected up to the sewage system at the campground. You have your black tank valve open and you connect the garden hose to here and use it to flush out your black tank. It helps with proper functioning of your sensors. As we continue along, you'll see here we have the connection point for your 50 amp power supply. This is where you would connect the provided cable and then connect it to the, uh, the power on either your house or the campground. Let's take a second to talk about your outside portion of your hot water tank. A couple things to note here is your drain plug or cap in this case and your pressure relief valve. Always make sure that if you're removing this cap in order to drain your hot water tank that you open the pressure relief valve. This just helps prevent this thing shooting off at you when you get to the last couple threads as this tank is pressurized. The next item we'll come to is the outside venting for your refrigerator. Now this venting is needed to remain obstruction free, so we have maximum airflow through here. That ensures proper functioning of the refrigerator. You will see your main cable or satellite TV input for the RV right here. So your either your satellite or the cable from the campground, this is where you would attach it. And one last storage compartment on this side. This is where you'll find that we put your 50 amp power cord. And with that 50 amp power cord, we gave you a conversion from the 50 amps here to 30 amps. The reason being, most people do not have a 50 amp plug on the outside of their house, but also some campgrounds do not have access to a full 50 amp power connection. They only have a 30 amp connection or maybe their 50 amp sites are full. So you have this to connect you to your 30 amp power. If you're wanting to plug in at home, we also have provided you with a conversion block that will convert this 30 amps down to 15. So that way you can plug in it at home. Then you'll see that inside the RV. Now you won't have full functionality of all aspects of the RV, namely AC and possibly the water heater and the fireplace, but it will allow you to run the lights in the refrigerator, etc. Continuing on, as we come around the back of the RV, we'll make note of ladder access to the roof. And in the center at the top, you'll see there's a pre-wired camera housing for a rear view camera. Now the rear view camera can be monitored from the tow vehicle via a screen. These are separate items that can be purchased if you choose to do so. Now previously I had mentioned the outdoor barbecue. Here is where it will attach. We see we have this post and this post. If we pull this pin, we can swing the RV key out. Now it's ready for the actual barbecue. And like I showed you, you would slide this and this into the two ends of the barbecue. And I did mention the Quick Connect propane port. And here it is here. So you'll see that there is a valve handle as well. So once you've connected the Quick Connect hose to both ends of the RVQ and the trailer end, you can open the valve handle and then light your barbecue as you normally would with the barbecue lighter. As we make our way back to where we started, I'm going to note a couple more things before we go inside. One being the output for your cable or satellite. 120 volt power and a TV mount, which will allow you to watch TV underneath your awning here and have full access to your cable or satellite. Also, we have on the heads of the awning, speakers. These speakers can be used together with the stereo inside the RV to listen to your music outside. Let's make our way inside and we'll see what else we can find. First thing, as soon as we get in the door, we'll turn around and look down. We'll see the unit's fire extinguisher. I always like the location just inside the door as it gives you quick access from inside the RV if you're cooking inside and quick access from outside in case you need it 
while cooking on the RV barbecue. Just inside the door, we have a couple other things to note as well. We have your indication panel where you can find the levels of your battery, your fresh, black, and gray water tanks, as well as switching to turn on your water pump and your water heater on gas or electric. Also in here, we have switching for the main lights of the RV and your awning light. You can see here that we have controls for your awning in and out as well as both slides. Down and to my right, we have your thermostat. This thermostat uses a capacitive touch, meaning that it's not mechanical. You don't have to press it hard. It's just a nice light touch and you can cycle through the options. If this fan is on high and you attempt to use the furnace, it will also use the blower from the air conditioner. Now the air conditioner is not producing cold air at this point. It is merely using the fan to achieve your high fan output. It's just helping move air around at that point. So if you're using your furnace and you do not wish to have the overhead AC fan on, just always make sure this is set to auto, your fan level, and then you can cycle through to the furnace and then use these buttons to select a higher or lower temperature. Let's step into your bathroom. The most important thing to note in the bathroom is the GFCI for the unit. If it is tripped, you'll see a red light like that. So if you find that you're without power at any of your counter plugs, your outside plugs, or any of the plugs that are around water, so sink in the bathroom, and again, counter plugs in the uh, kitchen area. If you find that they are not functioning properly, first place you may want to come look is here. If you see this red light on, that would indicate that the GFCI has been tripped. So you can press the reset button like so, and everything should be operational again. We make our way through the bathroom for now. We'll come into the bedroom. You'll see that we have a secondary control for the slide for the bedroom here as well as switching and a pre-installed mount for a TV if you choose to purchase. You will also notice that we have power supply and an output for your cable or satellite. Also in this area, we have a charging center. So you have two USB charging ports as well as a 12 volt charging area. And just below here is where you'll find the pre-wired location for your solar head unit. This is the where the monitoring system for your, your solar power, if you choose to do so, would be located. Also in the bedroom, we'll make note of your emergency exit. In order to utilize the emergency exit, you'll press down on the black tab, push the red handle over and up. It'll pop out, and once it's perpendicular to the wall or the window, Push it all the way out until it's fully out of the RV and then you may pull the red tab to remove the screen and escape to safety. There is a large amount of cabinet space here as well as closet space. We also have prop assisted storage to give you access to under the bed storage and you also have access to the one outside storage compartment from here as well. So as we make our way back into the bathroom here, I would like to make note of the location of your water pump. Your water pump is located at the bottom of this storage area or closet. There are two Red Robertson screws to remove here, and that will gain you access to your water pump. Now you'll see here, this is the fill tube for your water pump. If you were attempting to utilize the water pump to draw from antifreeze in order to winterize your system, this is where you do so. There is a valve inside the unit here. I did not take the screws out. There is a small valve that you turn to make sure it's in line with either the fill tube or the hose drawing from the freshwater tank. Whatever direction the valve handle is in line with 
will be the one that it is drawing water. I will show you what the valve looks like when I show you the back of the hot water tank. So we make our way into the main area of the RV. We will take a second to show you the power center or load center. This is where you'll find the breakers. Same as you would see in your house and they function pretty much the same. And fuses like you would see in your vehicle. And there's also some red LED lights that will light up to indicate when one of these circuits is not functioning properly. So if we move next door here and take a look at the back of your hot water tank, the uh, reason why you would need access to this would be if you were going to winterize yourself. At the moment you can see that the valve handle is pointing in this direction and it happens to be in line with this pipe and the fitting going into the hot water tank. So this right now is set to use the hot water tank. The water is flowing to the hot water tank and back out again on the hot side over here. You can see there's also a secondary valve handle here. So this is uh, ready to use. However, if we were to turn this valve handle down and this valve handle down in this direction, we would be changing it to a bypass mode and water would flow up through here and bypass the hot water tank altogether. Why would we do that? We would do that in order to uh, winterize the trailer. We do not need to fill the hot water tank full of antifreeze as it has a drain. So we merely bypass that hot water tank while winterizing the system. We'll pivot over to your range top and stove next. You'll see we have this nice glass top stove. It's important to note that we do not cook on the glass portion. We must fold the top up and out of the way before lighting any one of these top burners. In order to light these burners, we turn to the light position. With it in the light position, you turn the sparking knob and it will automatically light your burner. Same for all three. Now in order to light the stove, you first want to make sure that the door is open and left open. Turn this to the light position. And the only difference here is that you must press and hold the knob in while you turn the sparker. Depending on the amount of pressure built up in the system, it might take a few tries to, in order to light the oven. And I would also mention that before you drive away, when you, after you pack up, make sure that this is down. I have seen it where you hit a bump and these flop down and break. So always make sure when you are lighting, you leave it open. And then when you're leaving, make sure you leave it closed. Moving on over to your refrigerator here. Have a power button to uh, turn it on. We basically have three modes. We have a gas only mode, which it's in now. If for whatever reason it was unable to light on gas, it would attempt to light three times. And if it was unable to do so, you would see a different light here indicating that it was unable to light. This would be red. We also have a auto mode, which will select between electricity and gas automatically selecting electricity if it's available. And then we have a electricity only mode. Next, take a look at your stereo for the RV. The stereo has Bluetooth, auxiliary, HDMI, and five volt charging capabilities. It also has DVD and a two zone speaker system. Zone 1 is inside the RV, and Zone 2 is outside on the speakers on the awning that I showed you earlier. Now this stereo will allow you to play either zone independently, so you could listen to the stereo on your awning while it remains quiet inside, in case someone might be sleeping. So, next, we'll take a look here, down below your TV. And the one important thing to note here is this. We have a button here where your cable connects that switches between uh, antenna and cable TV. So if you wanted to go and watch TV via an antenna, you would have it on antenna like it is now. This light is on. You go to your TV into the settings and search for channels and find all the antenna channels. 
Now, if you have cable, if you have it on the antenna portion, that is actually a signal booster for the antenna. It will mess with your cable or satellite uh, signal. So, in order to watch your cable or satellite, you have to press this button and you'll see it lights up on cable TV. That would indicate that you are ready to go. So you just go back up to your TV settings and search for channels. If we come down here next, we'll see the carbon monoxide propane detector for this RV. You also see the green light on the front. Just above that green light, there's a button. You can press that button. When you do, they'll hear a series of loud beeps. The light will go to red. And when it's all done, it will go back to green if the system is operational and safe. I usually suggest that you check it or test it with the smoke detector for the unit, only because it's easier to remember. And there's already guidelines surrounding the use of your smoke detectors or testing of. Usually they say every six months, daylight savings time just makes it easy to remember. Go out and change the batteries. And then you can go ahead and test your carbon monoxide propane detector as well. Another note I would like to make about the air conditioning would be here. You can see that there's some baffles here. At the moment, these baffles are closed. And what that will do is force the majority of the cool air throughout these to these ports that are located throughout the RV. So if you want to spread the cool air to more points of the VRV, then you would want these baffles closed. However, if everybody's kind of hanging out in the main area of the RV and you're doing some cooking, you may actually wish to have all of the cold air fall right in this area here, as this is the area that would need the maximum cooling. In that case, you open the baffles and the cold air will all fall directly here, uh, keeping you nice and cool while you're cooking. I think that about covers everything that I needed to cover. If there was something that I forgot that was more important to you, I do apologize. However, if that is the case, don't hesitate to give us a call and we can either help you over the phone or if needed, we can shoot another video and specifically cover whatever area it is that you want more information on. Thank you very much and congratulations on your new purchase.